This is We Need Rent Money presented by Zoom. Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. Do, 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 do. Zoom, Zoom, I'm changing Zoom. my, there we go. I'm changing the angle. Does that work for you? Yeah, that works. Uh, we're here with uh, Gar Rogers, Garland Rogers. How, what do you like to be called? I see sometimes you'd like to be called Garland. Uh, no, Gar. Just Gar. Okay. Yeah, it's easy. It's easy, easy to spell. Right on. Um, so uh, Gar plays uh, Bill, the landlord in my movie. Uh, he does a terrific job. Uh, he's the one kicking these asses out of the house because they're just a bunch of stoners sitting on the couch. But uh, everyone will get that when they hear the landlord boom. So uh, Samson's working on that reggae song right now as we speak. So uh, oh, nice. Nice. Well, uh, thank you for coming on the show, Gar. Uh, the point of sure. this uh, is for the audience to get a better idea of you as a, a person than the wacky character that you play in this movie. So uh, what made you want to get into acting? Oh, gosh. Uh, I, I got suckered into it in high school. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure there's a story. I, I literally got... I did. I... I literally got, I really literally got suckered into it in high school. Uh, I had a, I had an English teacher who said, I need somebody to read a couple lines backstage and I like your voice. And I said, oh, okay, well, what the heck? I got nothing else to do. So I read the part of Big Brother in uh, 1984. Nice. Do you remember your first, that was your first role, huh? What did you, what did what did you uh, what did you learn from that? <laughs> I learned that I was trapped. I was never going to go back. <laughs> it just was more fun being not you, right? <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I was, I was always a little bit that way anyway. I imitated voices ever since I could see a cartoon. And I just never considered doing any of that stage work until he asked me. And I fell in love with the, oh, I got to hate to use the word, the process. Eh. But I just, it was a blast. I just had fun with it. It's, uh, I, I have no idea why it attracts me, but it does. What would you say has been your favorite role that you've performed? Because I mean, uh -huh. I've sure done enough, uh, enough performances to have a favorite role, I'm sure. I did. I did a version of a show, brilliantly written stage play called Wait Until Dark. And uh, I got to play, actually I've done it twice. <clears throat> the first time I was, a friend of mine was directing it and I went up to see the show and, and uh, <laughs> the, the guy who had uh, one of the lead roles, the kind of semi-sympathetic guy, OD'd three or four days before the show went on. And I came driving up to go fishing and watch his show and he says, oh, Gar, I need a little help. So I, I, I took on that role and it was about four days of, you know, like 16 hours a day to take that role and do it. And I had a blast, burnt out. I actually got to go fishing for an hour every day, but the rest of the time was all show, show, show. Would you say that was your most challenging because you had to spend most most your time learning it in such a short period of time? Well, yeah, absolutely. It was it was tough, but uh, but I I was working with some really really good people at the time, and uh, and I managed to pull it off. Only a couple of <laughs> only a couple of problems. I went through the set. I I stuck my arm through the set twice because I get killed. And, <laughs> and I broke through the set with my arm two times because I died very violently and went downstairs. And uh, so we had to patch the thing twice during the show. Did, so do you physically hurt yourself or just oh, act? Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. The second time, especially, I tripped at the top of the stairs. Ouch. Literally tripped. Oh, yeah. It was, it was special. It was a good thing I was dead because I literally crawled off the stage in the dark. <laughs> during the dark between the scenes and just went backstage and went, uh, 
Well, uh, so uh, so how high were the stairs that you fell? They were not all that high, but I tr I stumbled at the very top. Ah. Uh, and landed and landed at the bottom. On your back. No, on my on my heels, Ooh. and then fell back and slammed my head into the stage. Wow! Yeah. Well, yeah, the, well, uh, that's dedication right there. Yeah, and the brain damage was minimal. That's good. That's good. Um, so you're also a narrator for the Hippo Critic, uh, a narration for a children's coloring book. Shout out to Andre Royal and Andre Royal Jr. Yeah, uh, both absolutely. awesome gentlemen. Uh, Andre Royal plays the nut doctor in my movie, and Andre Royal helped out with uh, some merchandise material. How was that? Uh, that was great. I'm not sure he's going to use it, but uh, I took he took a shot on letting me do it. He's talking about perhaps using a female voice, but it was a blast to do it, and uh, and I liked working with Andre a lot. Well, I think your voice is way more sexier than a female's voice. I, but, but next time I talk to Andrea, I'll have to push him on no, that. No, 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 <laughs> jeez, no. Actually, I, I, I almost we had a chat the other day uh, uh, on a different set, and he was saying that, uh, and it makes sense to me. It's a children's book. A lot of times, I think, not to be sexist or anything, but. A, Female voice might be more appealing to children. Yeah, that's. I guess I, that's, be, I could be. I could be dead wrong. I don't know. So that nappy roots shoot actually did happen. What's that? Uh, you talking about the nappy roots shoot? Yes. Uh huh. Yeah. How how was that? Oh, that was that was a blast. That was a blast. We were in and out in pretty short order. Luckily. What was uh, your role on that? Oh, another another old guy. That's what I do now old guys <laughs> yeah i mean uh so uh you're also a state you were a stage director and yep. uh by, by the way uh how can you be in two places at once when you're not anywhere that's a great title by the way how was oh. that experience okay that uh, that was really fun because it was a ra it's a radio play and i'm gonna i'm gonna push you and anybody else listening should listen to Fire Sign Theater. Okay. That's, that's their play. It was a radio play done in the early 70s. And they did other, my favorite one that they did was really a thing called uh, Don't Crush That Dwarf, Hand Me the Pliers, which is a really funny show. Is, could you send me the link when we're done with this so I could put it in the box? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, great. Because I think people would enjoy that. So, uh, what? So, how was that different from obviously doing a radio play than doing a live? What was really fun was was transcribing it and making it work on stage. Because we, I gathered a bunch of people together and we put it together as a fundraiser for a, a, a local art art group back in the seventies or early late 70s and uh actually i called one of the members of the group to get to get uh permission to do it mm -hmm. and then later on studied under him a little bit his name is david osman okay. and the group like i said is called fire sign theater it was great working with david and he actually came to see the show which was really fun uh what do you think he liked it or he said he did you know yeah yeah, who knows? Did uh, they really are being honest with you? So. Well, yeah, I, it was it was a nice it was a nice little intimate stage. We only had like 150 people show up, but uh, but it was a small theater too, a small venue. And what, uh, he was what right was the, what was the story about about basically what the title is? Yeah, there's no way to describe it. A guy buys a car and ends up traveling the world inside the car. Okay. <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of a hallucinatory um odd thing. A lot of their humor style was stolen, not stolen but borrowed uh and used off and on throughout many many works of other people who made even more money. Oh wow. Um, but you would I know you would love to hear this. It sounds like a, it sounds like a trip. 
So, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah but I, I definitely want to check it out. So if yeah, you I'll send, send you the. I'll send you uh, at least some information as to where to find it. Great, and I'll let my audience know where they can find that. So, what could you say about my movie? Obviously, without giving too much away. Uh, oh man. Uh, well, here's what here's what I would say, uh, Blake. What I really enjoyed about doing your film was the fact that you guys trusted me to play with the character and uh and and we're happy with what i did of course i'm always happy about that right yeah of course oh they liked what i did yeah oh, it's cool but uh i i, I like the character and i got to and i got to play a lot of different aspects of this character and got to twist him up which was fun because you guys seem to appreciate that. And that's what I really enjoyed about it. But as far as like not giving too much of the story away, what could you say about our story? Well, I only know parts of it. I only got sides. I don't know the whole story. No, you don't know the whole story. No, no, no. I only got the sides that I was in. Well, it's based <laughs> on, based on a true story. That I that I understand, yeah, because yeah. <laughs> yeah. we all do need rent money, so yeah, yeah. Oh God, yeah. So yeah. Uh, we'll ju we'll just leave it at no. We we trusted you because we knew you were gonna bring that stage performance that we wanted, and uh, the camera was your stage, and that that Airbnb uh, it, you brought it to life. Even yeah. uh, I know well, you're still I know you're still waiting on that rent money, so. <laughs> yeah it looks like a from what i could tell near the end i'll be waiting for a little while on that too <laughs> so i won't give anything else away okay so you also um you're a teacher How's i was ex-teacher 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 you're yeah. now retired now yep but how was uh teaching youngsters are they more obviously more opening the learning than adults it depends on the kid you know, it's just like anything else. Uh, yeah. How many different kinds of people did you have on the set that you worked with? So there many. you, yeah, there you, you go. You name it from yeah, the yeah. least experienced to the most mm -hmm. experienced. But yeah. what I could say about everybody is the passion was there. Yeah. And, yeah. and uh, everybody cared about it. And the whole saying, feel the dreams. If you build it, they will come. My feeling was Samson built something and, Samson and I built something that was fun and people yeah. saw how much fun we were having and then more people wanted to come on board. There, there were parts of that filming that even though it was work in a sense, I was laughing my brains or trying to keep from laughing my brains out in the background during some of those scenes. I loved it. It's great. We call that good writing. Yeah, that, so, I would call, yeah. So yeah as, what, an English, uh, as, as an English teacher, I can agree with you. <laughs> Uh, there was a lot of time put into that screenplay, and it started off as a 182-page screenplay, and uh, now it's down to like 164 because obviously we didn't shoot everything that yeah, was in the yeah. scene, in this script. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, no, how'd you like being a teacher? I mean, obviously you paid the bills. Uh, you yeah. always you always like teaching people. Uh, the, one, the of the, one of the, one of the great things I liked about it is I got in, involved with a small school, and uh, one of the great things about it was I was that I had a very supportive administration. That it, it wasn't until maybe the let's see, this is twenty twenty. They managed to somehow keep the funding going for a small drama program. I was doing English and drama. Okay. Until maybe twenty fifteen. And then wow. the, money, the money just ran out. Yeah. It just ran out. So I got to do a theater, even though, even though I was basically the English teacher, you know? And so I got to, I never quite let go of the theater stuff ever. What was your favorite play you put on with your students? Uh, we, oh, one of the best ones that we did was a thing called The Foreigner. I don't know if you've ever seen it. But uh, uh, it's uh, it's one that I actually acted in earlier uh, in the mid '90s or something like that, and 
uh, it's it's just a funny play. The guy who wrote it died right after he wrote it, and it was wow. a great it was a great play. Yeah, had he, an airplane had an uh, airplane accident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, as I recall, the guy's name is Larry Shu, and uh, he wrote great, this thing. Great really, last name. Yeah, S H U E. Oh, it's not S H O E. No, not not O E. Oh, okay. <laughs> Nah, so uh, you, but it seems like you had a lot of fun. You also, you know, yeah. taught your kids yeah. some good stuff. I mean, yep, uh, education is very important. Uh, obviously, you got to know how to write if you're going to write a screenplay. You got to know. Yeah. You got to know words. So uh, I end up doing at the end of this interview. I always have this question I ask. Okay. And if you had an unlimited amount of budget, you know. Did you do you have a project in mind that you've been writing or working on or a role that you would like to do or have somebody come on to do? Yeah, uh, you know, at this point, I I just I really don't know. I don't know. I like doing a lot of different things. So there's um, no project on the back burner that you've always wanted to put on or make happen you just never had the money to do it i i know I, there hasn't really been especially the film business i've only skirted around the edges of that i worked for it as an as a professional extra for a year down in uh down south in california and um i just the film thing is brand new to me in one sense i worked a little bit off and on doing stuff but no film projects. Uh-oh. No. 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 Okay. Oh. No, that's fine. I uh like I said, like we talked about earlier about the winter farmer. Uh yeah, I just I promised my buddy who I wrote that with that it's gonna be on a big screen. So as long as somebody watches that on a big T V and mm -hmm. it's considered literally on a big screen. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's you know, that's but if we can get the right person in Hollywood to read that screenplay, hopefully things could start happening. But like I said, you know, there's a lot of legal jargon when it comes to these release forms. And uh, oh, of course, of course, yeah, oh yeah. Uh, a friend of mine has uh, has contact with the uh, somebody who does a lot of this kind of thing, and he had a great movie apparently put together. And he submitted it to one of the major competitions, which I don't know what it is. Yeah. But, but it was turned down because he missed getting one release form by the city of something or other. And they, they said, we can't do it. We cannot do it legally because you didn't get that one form done. So he couldn't, they were, they could, he couldn't, ex they would not accept his, they were ready, they were ready uh, but it was going to be green lighted you think no I mean, it no was, it was he had the film done it was it was a competition the film competition oh it but it was done but, it was ready to go yeah. he did not he did not have the one right, form one, one form yeah that's that's uh you got to dot dot your yeah. t's and you know yeah. cross your t's and dot your i's i mean yeah but I, I think that I have a whole family of lawyers and uh, my dad's <laughs> been writing contracts for like 35 years. So uh, when, they, when I send him this contract, he's reading well, he'll over know, it. And he he'll, was know like, what to look for. he'll know what to look for. He knew exactly what to look for. And he's like telling me, that's a fuck you. That's a fuck you, you know. And then <laughs> it's just like, uh, but now this producer really wants, to, I don't know. This guy really, I think, wants to read it. And he's willing to talk to my dad, explain this contract that it's like they've been using the same contract for 15 years. But mm -hmm. I don't know. I just think it's pretty cool, you know, because it's a producer of uh, Ready Player One, Spielberg's new movie that he just did. And oh. my, buddy, my buddy Samson gave me the idea to reach out to people that make movies similar to what you want to see your movie like. So I thought, Oh, yeah, of course. Of course. That of was a good idea. But no, Gar, I want to thank you for coming on this journey called Bill with me. And uh, I can't wait the audience to see Bill, the landlord in this movie. Um, you went beyond my expectations. I never thought you would do a reggae song and the whole nine yards. So, uh, and uh, yeah, I can't wait. I can't wait for you to hear that I'm, song. So. 
Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing it. I'm looking forward to seeing it. Me too. Unfortunately, I can't give you a day a date yet. Uh, we're 44 minutes into the rough cut right now. Um, oh. And uh, the, the time, time length is shorter than the, the page length is more than the time length. So uh, we're, not, mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're meeting our expectations by the editing team. Shout out to Team Awesome, Jeremy Ferguson and Matthew Hewitt, and they're doing a great job. And, uh, yeah, hopefully I can have a trailer for uh, Michael Schwab's showcase in December, but I'm not rushing to put something out to impress these people in the indie film community. I think that here in Eugene, yeah. I think they're already impressed with me. So, Listen, I just I – just, I'm, I'm hoping it edits well, but, you know, because you were under – you were under an amazing time crunch and uh i just hope everything <laughs> goes together i mean sense. half the know, time i know. didn't i didn't have a boom operator i had to be the boom operator you know but it, we did what mm -hmm. we did what it takes and uh like i said there was just so much passion with oh, yeah. my main leads and you so i just want to thank you again sir yes. hey it was it was a gas. It really was. Yes, I'm using the word gas, and that's my grandfather's terminology. <laughs> Very nice. So this was um, bad. We need rent money presented by Zoom. Zoom, 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 do, 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 do. Yeah. <laughs> Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. Thank you, Gar. All right, you take care. <laughs>